Big changes are in store across the United States as we head into next week. Severe weather across the plains, possibly our first major snowstorm, and a hurricane in the Caribbean. All next at the Weather Farm. In today's forecast, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about the upcoming weather over the next 10 days. We are going to break it down region by region, covering the potential impacts. And as always, we are watching each and every model run that comes in here at the Weather Farm to keep you ever aware of the ever-changing weather and the dynamic weather patterns impacting the United States. So let's just jump right into it. Across the eastern half of the United States, we are experiencing very calm conditions thanks to high pressure that is centered over parts of Quebec. We do have a little bit of moisture down in Louisiana, leftover remnants of what was once Hurricane Raphael. An area of low pressure is across parts of Nebraska spreading rain across Minnesota into Iowa and eastern Kansas. But the big story for our Wednesday is out in the Pacific Northwest. We have yet another trough moving its way on shore and another atmospheric river of moisture making its way into parts of Washington and Oregon. This is going to bring significant heavy rain and significant mountain snows to Oregon, Washington, and parts of British Columbia. And the fact that this pattern is going to persist for several days leads us to believe that there could be significant flooding by the time we approach this weekend. So the thing I want to talk about now is our temperatures, because one of the things that's going to distinguish this week, which has been relatively calm, and next week is the sudden temperature change for most of the United States. So I want to orientate us to this map. This is an anomaly map. So the blues... And the, the reds tell the areas of colder than normal and warmer than normal temperatures. And when you see these numbers on the maps, if you see a 10, that means for that particular location, the temperature is expected to be 10 degrees warmer than it would be for this time of the year for that particular location. It is not an indication of what the temperature will be. Likewise, when you see minus 5, minus 10 across parts of Texas, at that particular time, in that particular location, temperatures are expected to be 10 or 15 degrees colder than normal for that location. So that kind of orientates us to what this map is telling us. So we're going to see a large area of colder than normal weather out west, and it's going to make its way even to, into the Ohio Valley, into the east coast, as we get to the late, late parts of next week. What we're going to see uh, across parts of Canada is we're going to see this building of warmer than normal temperatures, you know, 10, 15, 20 degrees warmer than the seasonal norms across most of the Canadian provinces. This temperature gradient of warm to the north and, and cold to the south is going to um, lower the pressures and anything that might form down in the Caribbean, as we are going to talk about later in this video in regards to tropical development, with this dynamic in place, the colder air is more dense, it weighs more. If you think of the column of the air, colder air weighs more, so it, it has a little more pressure. So we're going to have a, a tighter pressure gradient here in the lower 48 than what we're going to see across parts of Canada. And it is that tight pressure gradient that is going to allow the storms that are going to come out of the Rockies middle of next week to be more severe and any potential development in the Gulf to be more intense than what it normally would be for this time of the year. So let's jump right into our jet stream. And we see this jet stream having a trough across the central plains for our Wednesday. All of that's going to move to the east for our Thursday. We are going to see a little trough uh, dive in across the northeast, bringing a chance of rain and snow to parts of New England. But there is that, that, that trough that came on shore from the Pacific Northwest, digging its way down into the Rockies for our Friday and Saturday. Out ahead of it, across the central plains into the Ohio Valley, we are going to see southwesterly winds warmer than normal temperatures. But take a note here. We have a sharp, deep trough that's going to form down into the Baja of California. These yellows are jet streaks. The, uh, the, the higher the color, the more fast the jet stream winds are at that particular location. By the middle of next week, we are going to get a negatively tilted trough with this area of low pressure. We see the highest winds in the left entrance region 
of the jet streak. So that means this system is wrapping itself up. It's getting more intense as it ejects out into the central plains. And it is on our Wednesday that we expect a round of severe weather from Kansas down to Texas like we saw last week. But the thing we're going to notice is that this area of low pressure, this trough, it's going to stay in the same area for several days. And that's due to that, that Greenland blocking pattern that we talked about in our last video. And if you didn't catch that, click above for the link. But it's going to allow that area of low pressure and that unsettled weather to kind of sit and spin across this area, the upper Great Lakes, for several days. And if that pattern happens, granted it is still 10 to 12 days out, if all of those pieces come together as this particular model thinks that they will, we could have significant winter storm across parts of the Dakotas into Nebraska, spreading into Minnesota. And even as we get towards our Thanksgiving week, that cold air coming across the lakes of the Great Lakes, it could provide significant lake effect snow. And it's something we're going to talk about later in this video. So let's jump ahead to our weather this week. Again, here is that low pressure as it makes its way across uh, Iowa into Missouri, spreading out rain across Indiana and Ohio for our Thursday. It gets out of here pretty quickly, and we, we turn our attention back to the Pacific Northwest as we await the next system to move on shore. And we see by Friday night into Saturday, we see mountain snows across the Sierras into parts of Nevada and Idaho. Even into part around the Yellowstone, we see some snowfall occurring. We do have a brief system that's going to make its way, it's going to retrograde back into Maine from the Atlantic. It's going to bring snow there. But here is the system that we're going to be watching and exactly how it develops once it gets on shore. Now granted, a lot of these models, they take data, they feed it into a computer system, they run a lot of mathematical calculations, but it's not until the system gets on shore. And we don't expect that next one to get on shore until about Saturday night. So we really don't have a lot of good data to go on until we start getting those observations on shore. So it's something we're going to check into here and stay on top of at the weather farm. But with our weather on Wednesday into Thursday, the Storm Prediction Center has yet just a marginal risk of severe weather. We don't expect a lot of tornadoes. We don't expect a lot of severe weather. Maybe down around Louisiana into Mississippi, that would be it. For most of the Ohio Valley, we have a very slight risk. Another area of, of impactful weather could be across parts of Oregon and Washington, but even that's marginal at best. Rainfall from the, this week will generally feature one to two inches across parts of the Ohio Valley, extending down into Mississippi, Alabama, and northern parts of Georgia. Significant rains, two, four, five, eight inches plus across Oregon and, and Washington. And even across parts of Maine, this is going to fall mainly in the form of snow and rain mix as that low retrogrades back from the Canadian Maritimes back into Quebec due to that Greenland blocking high pattern. So let's look at the upper air pattern again starting next week. Here's that trough that's making its way in. This is the one that's going to change our weather. But watch, we have the area here in Greenland, the blocking high, so when that blocking high is in place, everything dives down into the south. Here's a development where we think might be a tropical system. This particular model wants to bring it into the Gulf. A lot of details to be worked out, so don't get caught up in those details. But that low is going to eject itself into the central plains by our Wednesday into Thursday. And what we're going to see here, it doesn't really move very much. We have a high across Greenland. We have a high across uh, parts of Alaska. In, in, in British Columbia. So this low area, pressure area doesn't really have anywhere to go. And it is not until next weekend, the weekend before Thanksgiving, that things start to break down a little bit. We start to get a little more of a zonal flow. But we have cooler than normal temperatures across most of the 48 while there's ridging and high pressure across most of Canada and Alaska. And it, we, we're going to see this per pattern persist through the end of the month. So if we look at our weather pattern into next week, so again, this is starting Monday the 18th. Again, we're going to have that low pressure that came on shore. It's going to eject itself down to the Baja. It's going to eject out into Colorado, spreading severe weather for our Monday and Tuesday 
into parts of Colorado, into Kansas. It's going to make its way up into Nebraska and the Dakotas on our Tuesday. But as we saw in that upper air chart, it's just going to start to sit here. And as those colder air works its way in, we see that 540 line. That's that freezing line, 32 degrees or colder. As it makes its way further and further south with those colder temperatures, what was once rain is going to turn into snow. And as this low sits here for several days, it's going to continue to produce snow uh, fall on the backside and rain out ahead of it across the Ohio Valley. So we're going to see some significant rains here, while we're going to see some significant snowfall across the northern plains. A lot of this is still to be determined. The exact track, the exact uh, amounts of precipitation are yet to be worked out, and we will continue to watch these here at the Weather Farm. Let's take a look down at the tropics. We have an area of concern outlined by the National Hurricane Center. It is here just um, south of Cuba. In this general area, we have about a 70% chance of development within the next 48 hours, and that increases to about a 90% chance of development within seven days. And, and most models are picking up on something happening. Now, where this particular system goes is the big wild card. There are several models that do keep it spinning around in this general area for a few days uh, to start next week into the middle of next week. And it is by the middle of next week that it starts to eject out either towards the Yucatan and up into the Gulf, or some models want to bring it across Cuba and into the Bahamas. A lot of that's going to depend upon that trough. If you remember, we're going to have that trough that's going to dive down across the central plains. And so we have high pressure here across the Atlantic off the coast of the Carolinas. That's moving in a clockwise situation. So it's going to want to nudge the hurricane or the tropical storm system off to the west. At the same time, this trough is going to kind of push it uh, from the west to the east, so it's going to push it across the Gulf. So how quickly this trough gets in play to this storm and where this storm actually develops and where it moves to is going to play a part in where it impacts. Again, I will caution you, there are some models that do develop it and make it go right through the little Yucatan gap into the Gulf, possibly impacting Florida. At this point, it is two weeks out. It is way too early to determine. So as I mentioned, this storm is going to form somewhere off the coast of Central America. It's going to sit here for a couple days, getting down to about a 925 millibar low. That would put it at a Category 3 or a Category 4 hurricane if it gets to that level. It is something we've not seen here in the Western Atlantic in 50 years. This is the GFS model. It is the American model. The American model is generally good five days out at most, maybe up to seven days. So it does take it towards the Yucatan up into the Gulf and brings it on shore somewhere um, along Florida. I will tell you that there are other models that take this storm and, it, and have it impact more across the Yucatan. Causes it to weaken a little bit, takes it down to about 1,000 millibar low, and then kind of has it go into the Gulf, not really reforming or re-strengthening as much. Other models want to have that trough come down and impact the storm, take it across parts of Cuba and over towards the Bahamas. All solutions are possible, and it's something we will be watching over the next several days here at the Weather Farm. So jumping back to the United States and that upcoming cold temperature uh, outlook, here's a map of our forecasted temperatures. These are the temperatures that are forecasted, uh, the actual temperatures. We see in the middle of next week, we see that cold air over the western half of the United States. Out ahead of it, we have that warmer air. But by the time we get to the end of next week, that cooler temperatures have made their way all the way down into Texas, where we could have highs in the 50s and 60s. And across parts of Montana, we could have high temperatures in the teens and 20s as we approach the Thanksgiving week. So something to definitely keep in mind as, as we prepare for the uh, upcoming change to what we've been used to across the United States. 
I do want to look at the snowfall impacts. Again, if that storm continues to sit and spin, we could see several inches of snow piling up across the Dakotas. However, if the model doesn't develop as we think it will, or if that Greenland blocking high isn't as strong as we think it might be, this obviously could not come to fruition. So it's something we're going to continue to monitor. But the thing I want to note is, if this happens, and we get those winds coming off the warm waters of Lake Michigan and the Great Lakes, we could see significant lake effect banding off of Erie, Ontario, uh, Superior, and Lake Michigan, all in Lake Huron, all things that we need to be watching as we move toward that Thanksgiving week. It's something we will be watching here at the Weather Farm. To wrap it up, it's clear we are in an active pattern for the next 10 days. Cold air from the Rockies, severe weather in the plains, potential snowstorms, maybe even a tropical system down in the Gulf. A lot is going to be happening over the, the next 10 to 14 days. Make sure that you do hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for updates. Keep checking back as we track each and every development as each new model run comes in because the Weather Farm is here to help stay, make sure that you're prepared. We thank you for watching. We hope you have a great Wednesday. Check back with us on Friday for the next video for your upcoming weekend forecast, and we hope to see you again next at the Weather Farm.